Ja. Hello and welcome to the final chapter in our Mercedes-Benz W116 documentary. Part one was sort of an overview, um, an introduction to the range. Part two was all the nitty-gritty specs and engine and trim levels and that. Part three was pros and cons or positives and negatives, a sort of buyer's advice. And this final one, part four, is where we interviewed a couple of owners to give you an impression of what it's like to live with a W116. We'll put all the links in the description below so you can watch the whole series. Uh, let's go. Right, we're gonna have to start with an apology for the lengthy delay in publishing this final part. Um, we were gonna jump on the bandwagon and say hashtag coronavirus, but let's not make jokes of that. Um, the fact is we had quite a few owners lined up to interview, but about half of them never got back to us or cautiously avoided us, which we completely respect and understand. Um, we also beg your forgiveness for the upcoming footage. The quality is not that hot, including the audio. We did the best we could under the circumstances. Some people didn't want to be rigged up with microphones or have strangers in their house. So some of it is even remote submitted by the owners, which we really appreciated. Thanks guys. Um, yeah, we asked them all six questions and um, we hope it gives you a good insight into what it's like to own a W116. Here we go. We got our Merc in September 1975. I got this one in, I inherited it in, a nine, in 2002. And my dad got it in 1973. So it's been in the family since 1973. Um, my W116 I bought in, with my father. We each paid 50% of the selling price in March of 2014. Ours arrived in Cape Town in October 1973 from Stuttgart. It was actually consigned to an address in Mozambique in order to circumvent the sanctions against Zimbabwe where we lived at the time. But I actually took delivery of it in the docks in Cape Town. Uh, when did you get yours? Last month. Um found them on Facebook. A guy wanted to use the engines to put in a Tata Bucky and uh, I saved them from the fate. <laughs> Favorite feature in the car? Of the car. Of the car. It had a fantastic road holding and what we liked about the car was actually the interior. Color, the color scheme of the interior. Well, I haven't driven it for a while, but it used to be pretty fast and it was very solid on the road and it was just solid and big but also quite easy to drive and easy to steer. Um, would probably have preferred an automatic to a manual. Um, well, I had the 280S, so. Feature-wise, even for an S-Class, it was bare bones. Um, it didn't have air conditioning. Um, didn't have electric windows. It didn't have rear headrests. Um, but what I really did enjoy is I loved the color combination. It was cypress green, and it had a leather interior, but it wasn't all very used to normal beige leather interior. It had a, a hint of orange to it, so it was this lovely cypress green with this orange tint blizzard interior and that color combination if it could be a feature that was very much the best feature i did love having the mb1 bunt alloy wheels on it it looked really really good and being a 280s they didn't come standard with those wheels um, but out of everything in that car it had to be the color combination it was just to me, that was the ultimate color combination for a 116. The favorite feature of the car was twofold. The first was the V8 engine, which in its day, at 200 horsepower, was pretty powerful. 
But what made that car much better than any South African one was it had a four-speed manual gearbox. The gearbox was fine, the performance of the car was transformed, but the clutch was not good. It jutted on takeoff and defied numerous attempts by Stanley Porter to rectify the clutch shutter. What's your favorite feature? Well, they make great donor cars and I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but the W108 shared the same 116 engine and the 350 SEs, not the 350 SEs, the 280 SE 3.5s. And that is mainly why I bought them as donor cars, because both of them were way too far gone as insert picture right here. <laughs> The fondest memory was uh, picking up our eldest son from the hospital where he was born in the brand new car. <laughs> well, lots of fond memories of driving it, but um, the thing that sticks out in my mind is when I was driving um, in France with my parents and my aunt and we were heading for a potential accident with two trucks, one truck passing another truck and coming towards us on a highway and um, I managed to control the car and veer off the road just in time but I didn't, I, I basically slammed on the brakes until I was going about, from about 130 down to 60 before I left the road and the car handled perfectly. My parents didn't handle it so well. I was only 19 at the time. Lovely. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, all three and a half weeks of it. Um, I enjoyed every single moment of it. We, my father and I, we bought the car. It was registered and licensed on my name. We'd organized storage for it, paid storage in a secure facility. And every single morning I woke up going, okay, I'll, when I'm done, I'll take the car and go store it. And it ended up for three and a half weeks, the car was never stored. Um, I had a 1997 Nissan Sentra debut, which was my very first car, um, and I love that car to bits as well. And I remember at some stage I parked that car for a week and a half and drove the 116 every day. I just started working um, as a used uh, auto salesman at a dealership. I hadn't even started earning commission yet. Couldn't really afford to put petrol in it, and I daily did. Um, because I loved it so much. So I'm going to be honest, every single minute and second that I spent in that car was was a good memory. I didn't have any bad memories of that car whatsoever. I didn't have it long enough to have bad memories to start off with. My fondest memory is very simple. I used to drive that car from Cape Town up to Salisbury where it was really based as a university student, believe it or not. And on one trip up to uh, what was then Salisbury, a Mazda Rotary in the middle of the Karoo where there were no speed limits in those days challenged me and I think he was shattered at the performance of this 350 SE because of its manual gearbox. So it was seen off with gusto in the open plains of the Karoo and I never forgot that. Your fondest memory with it? Well, travelling down to Ketman's Hope in, uh, in the south of Namibia on a scrapyard, pulling an engine and cutting out a VIN number. <laughs> I couldn't bring the entire car with, so I cut the VIN number out. The other one is actually arriving on Wednesday, Tuesday, the day after this video came out. The worst thing was when you took off at a robot or a stop street, it had a sort of a drop out and then it took again. It took a very long time for the mechanics to sort that problem out. Do you think it was specific to your vehicle? No, it was a standard problem eventually, it turned out to be. Okay. I guess the fuel consumption. Um, and these days cars are getting smaller, so it's a very big thing to drive around. But um, it was a very nice car when it came out. I'm going to be honest, personally, I, I didn't find anything bad about them. They're well built. 
Um, they're all reliable. It is a classic Mercedes Benz. There are certain things you need to overpay for, but you don't have a choice. If 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 you buy it, that that it comes with the territory. But it drives well. It brakes well. Um, they are reliable. They're not difficult to work on. Um, and out of the S classes, and the, I am someone that currently owns a 126, which I love. Um, but out of every single S class generation, I still think the 116 is the most elegant out of all of them. So. I honestly don't have anything bad to say, but it is probably once again due to only have had the car for three and a half weeks and still very much looking at the car through rose tinted glasses. Um, but I'm not ashamed at saying that either. Ah, uh, very hard to think of a worse thing with them, but I would say with, with hindsight that fuel consumption was probably the worst thing, and fuel consumption specifically in town. On the open road with the manual gearbox, it was very acceptable. But the minute you had to pull that weight around in urban conditions, it uh, drank fuel. In MPG terms, I would say you'd be lucky to get 18 MPG in town. And corrosion? Oh, yes. Uh, ours, ours never corroded because cars don't corrode in, in uh, Zimbabwe or, or in Rhodesia. But it did spend a lot of time in Cape Town. But my own experience suggests that the lower sills immediately behind the front wheels are vulnerable to rust. And I've also seen quite bad corrosion building up on the upper rear wings just below the chrome trim on the rear window. It seems to trap water there. The worst thing about these cars so is probably their sway bar design. The sway bar runs along the firewall, which is completely impractical. Um, usually you'd see a sway bar running in front of the, the subframe. Um, so yeah, that's probably the worst part. And that everybody assumes somewhere along the line it belonged to someone in the Mafia. Look after it and have it regularly serviced. I don't know any, but I would say definitely buy a left-hand drive that was made in Germany. Like yours? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this one's for sale, right? This one is for sale. Okay, we'll put your details in the description of the so video. So if somebody wants to buy it as a collector's item, they may do so. It's ready to go? Yes. <laughs> That's very easy. Buy them while they're still affordable. Um, it's weird. I've one two sixes second hand in the market are climbing still a lot faster than one one sixes, um, which is weird because the one one six still has a lot of that chrome, that very seventies um, Mercedes Benz feel to them. And ashamedly, you do feel a bit like a very affluent African dictator when you drive one a one one six. You have this an Idi Amin feel to it, uh, which a one one two six doesn't have. Um, but they're still very well priced um, and I think if you are aspiring to buy a 116 I think you should jump on it. At some point someone will actually start realizing they're worth something. Um, it's long overdue but while, um, while people are still blindly looking past 116s if you really want one buy them now they are reasonably affordable um, and once again, they're not too difficult to maintain and they will they will grow in value. They will definitely appreciate over time. But while they are still affordable, um, do buy them. That is the best advice I can give is while, they, while they're there, buy them. Mm, the advice to any 116 owner, uh, if it's an automatic transmission model, I would certainly check that the auto transmission is fully functional. Uh, otherwise, you could be in for trouble. Uh, but otherwise, I would say corrosion is the main factor, as well as worn suspension components. They can get a bit soft when the shocks get tired and the bushes get soft. Uh, what advice would you give aspiring 116 owners? Um, don't hold back. They're actually very reliable, very nice cars. Um, and built like tanks. They drive like them also. Um, the acceleration in the three, 350s and the 280s actually match <laughs> tags. For um, the 450 SEL 6.9 is a legend and um, it's a car that I'd really like to own one day. 
and I think anybody, any Mercedes enthusiast should own. I've got no plans, we've got no, we sold it to my father and unfortunately he had an accident with it and it's no longer existing. Well, thank you for your time. So pleasure. Yeah. Um, to sell it and then I'll probably give the person who buys it a free pizza. Nice. Thank yeah. you for your time. Pleasure. That's where the sad part comes in. I had the car for three and a half weeks and I had a five year high school reunion and having my first classic Mercedes Benz or co-owning my first classic Mercedes Benz and being a five year high school reunion I wanted to be a bit braggish and oafish so I decided that I'll be going to the reunion with that car and drove through to the reunion had an absolutely great time and was very responsible I told myself the whole evening I need to have one drink um, because obviously I don't firstly want to be in an accident with the newly purchased beautiful battleship of a Mercedes and secondly I had no intent of being pulled over while being intoxicated in the British battleship and whole evening went great literally only had one beer and as luck would have it on my way home at two o'clock or exactly quarter to two that morning eight kilometers from where i live i fell asleep behind the wheel and i drove into as luck would have it another mercedes-benz and sadly it was an immediate write-off um but Testament to the board quality. I remember being loaded into the ambulance and the car was still idling in park at 700 revs, not missing a beat. It had bled all over the road, oil and radiator fluid, and it still went. Um, but yeah. it, was, it was a three and a half week love story and I think as with many people, their first high school crush, I'm still not over that car and still miss that car very much. Uh, sadly, the car was sold many, many years ago in Rhodesia to a very lucky owner who bought an as brand new autumn beige 350 SE manual built in Stuttgart with a four-speed gearbox. What are your plans for your 116 vehicle? Well, it's quite simple. Parts. <laughs> Some of my parts are um, going to Anya's 116 and some of them are going on my W108, um, especially the engines. So yeah, that concludes my little interview with myself. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope, I hope to, uh, to hear and to read your comments of your 116 ownership. Okay. That wraps up this video and indeed the whole series about the Mercedes-Benz W116. We hope you enjoyed it. Please let us know in the comments below what you thought, uh, which car we should do next. We've got one lined up already. And if you own a W116, why don't you grab your phone or camera, get close to your vehicle and submit your answers to those six questions. We'd love to hear from you and could even do a follow-up video with all your answers. Um, as a little bonus, we've got some images that we found on the internet coming up just now about weird and wonderful W116's celebs TV movie appearances that sort of thing thanks so much for watching uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet and drive safely bye bye
safety.